Hello boys and girls, it's great to be with you again. It's hard to believe that it's October already and fall is here. Before we start our Kids Bible Club this month, we're going to open with a prayer and Peg's going to come up and say our prayer for us. So if you bow your heads and get ready to pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all the kids that have tuned in to watch our Kids Club video. And we just ask your blessing upon them. We thank you, Lord, for the teachers that are willing and ready to prepare the lessons. And we just pray, Lord, that soon we can be doing this in person again. But until then, we know that your word is true and that you are faithful and you will be watching over us and keeping us safe. In thy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Peg. You know, when we look outside in October, we know that summer is over and fall is here. Some of the things we see, the leaves have turned to colors, and some of them have actually fallen on the ground, and you can rake them up and jump in them and play in them. The acorns have fallen off of the big oak trees, and we have to wear sweatshirts and coats when we go outside. Every season is different. In the winter, you hope for snow to go sled riding and build forts, and in the spring and summer, you can't wait to, for it to get warm again to play outside without wearing those sweatshirts and coats. The seasons are all different, but there's one thing that never changes, and that's God's love for you and for me. He will always love us, and He wants to live in our hearts so we can share that love with others. Again, this month, you each got a bag for October, and it has your worksheets and your snack and your craft in it. And if you had a birthday in October, you'll also have a birthday present in there. Um, our staff will be meeting soon to see if we can have club again at church. And so we will be sure to let you know if you're going to be able to come to church for club or if we'll be doing it online again. For every one of you that has a birthday in October, we want to wish you a wonderful happy birthday. And let's get started with our songs. Hi boys and girls. Um, it's nice to see you again, and I am excited to announce that we are going to do a song, the B-I-B-L-E. And I believe we did this one a few times when we were in church, but um, it's kind of a fun and it's exciting. So please sing along, and again, make, make a joyful noise in your house, let your parents hear it, and um, we hope to see you soon. Thanks.
tested and reliable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The books of the Bible, their wisdom's verifiable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians 1 and 2, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation, the books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Now you know all 66 books of the Bible. Alright, good morning Kids Bible Club and welcome. It is so nice to be with you. I'm sorry we can't be in person, but at least we're lucky enough that we can share a story about God right here online. So, I am excited to share with you the story of the age of the earth. Before we do that though, I want to share the memory verse for this month. Our memory verse comes from Psalms 8, 5, and 6. And again, all of this information is in your packet of goodies, so you can grab it out of there and follow along. Psalms 8, 5, and 6. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All right, again, I'm excited to share a story with you. And if you are a number person, you are going to love this story. This Bible story is full of all kinds of numbers and a little bit of math. If you're not a number person, you're still going to love this Bible story because you're going to find out something very cool. How we figured out how old the earth is. So let's get started. All right, we talked about, in the last couple months at Kids Bible Club, about creation. And we know that God created everything in just six days. And everything God created was created according to his kind. We discussed the sea animals, the flying animals, the land animals, and man. Last month we talked about, and I hope that you tuned in for it, we talked about the dinosaurs and the dragons, and they were created on days five and six, along with some other sea creatures and some other land animals. They were real, and they lived with man. We read all these things in the Bible. All right, raise your hand if anybody knows the song Happy Birthday. I would sure hope that your hands would be up. Everybody knows the song Happy Birthday. We sing it at birthday parties. We sing it to our friends when it's their birthday. Maybe we sing it to ourselves on our birthday. Well, have you ever thought about why we have a birthday? A birthday marks the day that we were born. It shows us that one year has passed and another one is beginning. So birthdays keep track of our age. I'm sure each of you know your age. Maybe you even know your parents' age or your grandparents' age. Or maybe you don't. Maybe they don't want you to know and they kept it a secret. Well, today in our Bible story, 
we're going to do some simple math, some basic math, and we're going to learn the birthday of our Earth. So, before we get started, I want you to grab your Bible. Make sure you have it handy with you. Again, we've been working hard on our books of the Bible, so I hope that you're still practicing, even though we haven't been together in person. Keep practicing those, so when we get back, Carol will be very impressed. And also in your packet of goodies, there's a scripture sheet, so you can grab that as well. And we're going to get started on our verses for today. We learned that God created everything in six days, about 6,000 years ago. Many people don't believe this. There are a lot of different ideas out there about how the earth was created and how old the earth really is. We often hear that the earth is millions or even billions of years old. Sometimes it's hard to know what is really true. So today, we're going to figure out where that number 6,000 came from. So, since you have your Bible, I want you to open it up to the book of Genesis. All of our verses today are coming from Genesis. And I know this one isn't tricky. You all remember where Genesis is, even though we haven't been at Kids Bible Club for a while, right? Genesis is the first book of the Bible. So open your Bible up to Genesis, or again, you may refer to your green scripture sheet. It has our Bible verses on there for you. We're going to look at Genesis 5, verses 1 through 5, and then Genesis 5, verse 32. So again, open those Bibles to Genesis 5, 1 through 5, and Genesis 5, verse 32. And it says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeliness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them, and he named them man when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeliness, after his image, and named him Seth. The days of Adam, after he fathered Seth, were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. After Noah was 500 years old, Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Javan. All right, so if you look back, and if you were listening carefully, in the first verse that we talked about in Genesis 1-5, it talks about the generations for the genealogy. Does anybody have any idea what that word means? I bet you do. I'm pretty sure that if you went to Brookville, when we had the school closure, one of your project choices was an ancestor report. Well, that's exactly what genealogy is. Genealogy is the study of family. It's like a family tree. You study your parents' family, your grandparents' family, your great-grandparents' family. You go back as far as you can so that you can learn who your ancestors were. Well, in the first verse that we just read out of Genesis 5, it talks about the genealogy that began with Adam. So if you could pull out your scripture sheet and circle where it says Adam, and it says the generations of Adam, the genealogy of them. And then at the end of the last verse I read, we're going to end up with Genesis 5, 32, it says we end with Noah. So go ahead and circle Noah on your sheet too. All right, did you see? So in this chapter of Genesis, it shows us the generations of people from Adam all the way to Noah. And they were all from the same family. And they all started with Adam and Eve, the first people. Okay, now we're going to move into Genesis 11. And in Genesis 11, we're going to read verses 24 through 26. And again, open that Bible or grab your scripture sheet and read along with me. Genesis 11. When Naor had lived 29 years, he fathered Terah. And Naor lived after he fathered Terah 119 years, and he had other sons and daughters. When Terah had lived 70 years, he fathered Abram, nor and Herod. Okay, so the last two chapters that we read, there was a word that I'm not sure maybe some of you know, some of you don't. I actually have it bold, but it's really hard to see on my paper. It's 
father. And the word father means, just so that we have that clarified, it means to become the father of a child. And so in this context, it means one person, the father, had a son. So we're especially interested, as we get started to figure out with all these numbers and the age, we're especially interested in Abram, or Abraham, as he was later called. So go ahead and on your scripture sheet, and you can circle Abram. All right, so we have these very detailed genealogies in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. These genealogies start with Adam and go all the way to Abraham. These lists give us what we need to figure out how old the earth really is. God told us that each father, each father had a son and gave us their age. Through that, in the amount of time from creation week, we can calculate the age of the earth to be about 6,000 years, not billions of years old. So let's see if we can figure this out together. The next thing I want you to grab is your class notes. And this is in your bag of goodies as well. It looks a little bit crazy. It has two different charts, but grab those class notes out, please. All right, our first challenge with our numbers. Here we go. At the top, there is a chart, and it says the father of Adam, and over here is the son Seth. The next column has the scripture reference for each one. So what we need to do is we need to look at each scripture and then we're going to record on our paper the age of the father when the son was born. Let's do the first one together. So the first one says Adam, the son was set, and it's from Genesis 5.3. So looking back on your scripture sheet, Genesis 5.3 says, when Adam had lived, 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeliness, after his image, and named him Seth. So on your first line, you're going to write 130. Perfect, excellent. Let's do the second one, just for fun. The next one is the father, Seth, and this comes from Genesis 5, 6. So I want you to look at your scripture sheet, and in Genesis 5, 6, read through it, and you should come up with 105. Perfect, good job. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause your video and go ahead and finish reading through the next six scriptures, filling in the ages, and while you have the video paused, grab the calculator if you have it, because you're really gonna wanna check my math. And then when you're done filling that in, come on back and we'll check our answers together. All right, welcome back, guys. Let's see. Let's see if we agree on some of our, on our answers here. I'm just going to read down for you. The first one we did together was Adam to his son Seth, which was 130 years. Then the second one we did was 105 years. So our third verse was from Genesis 5, 9, and that should be 90. Genesis 5, 12 would be 70. Genesis 5, 15 is 65. Genesis 5.18 is 162. Genesis 5.21 is 65. Genesis 5.25 is 187. And then the last one, ending with son Noah, from Genesis 5.28 is 182 years old. Wow. I hope that you learned something with looking up all those scriptures, because there is the information there that I didn't even know. Okay, so back to our class notes. We have all those numbers filled in. Now it's asking us over here, how many years from Adam to Noah? Here's where you need your calculator. If you add up all of those numbers, and check me on this because I could be wrong, you should get 1,056. So we're gonna put 1,056 and 56 on that line. All right, perfect. So that is the number of years from Adam to Noah. Awesome, you guys are doing great with this. Okay, let's take a look at our second chart. On the second chart, we start with Noah and we go to Abraham. Now again, this is very similar to what we did before. You're going to check your scripture sheet, you're going to read through the scriptures listed and then fill in the age for each father when their son was born. When you're done, we're gonna add up that number and see 
how many years from Noah to Abraham? And all of these verses, again, come out of this awesome book, the Bible, Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible, chapter 11, verses 10 through 26. So go ahead and pause your video again, check out that second chart, and then come on back and we'll check our answers. Again, you can also check your calculations because I could be a little off on my math. It does happen. All right, welcome back. I hope you got all of these ones filled in because there are a lot of them. Let's take a look. Again, we were starting with Noah. So going down through, we have Noah from Genesis 5, 32. 500. The next one is 100. 35. 30. 34, 30, 32, 30, 29, and 130, which ends with the son of Abraham. So, if you took all of those numbers and you added those numbers up, I want to know what we have for years from Noah to Abraham. My answer is 950 years. So hopefully give me a thumbs up. We're all on the same page so far. Perfect. Now if you look at your class notes, it keeps asking us some other questions. A total of blank years from Adam to Abraham. So it wants to start at the beginning, like we talked about in Genesis. Adam, the whole way to Abraham. What we need to do is we need to add up these two numbers on the side. So you are going to add. 1056 with your 950 and I got as a total 2008 so around 2,000 years is what we have from Adam to Abraham so that number can go here on our class notes and it also can go at the bottom because it's going to ask us three different questions about um, our years at the bottom so the first one says Adam to Abraham was about, well, we just read it, 2,000 years, and that comes from our book of Genesis, and then we have Abraham to Jesus. Hmm, so this is one we have not done. I didn't ask you to read any of those scriptures and do any calculations on that one, so let me share with you. Most historians agree that Abraham lived about 2,000 years before Jesus. So, there was 2,000 years from Abraham till Jesus. So that's what we're going to fill in on the second line of your class notes. Now, as far as the third question, it says, from Jesus to today. So let's think about this. What year are we in right now? As crazy as it really is, we're not really sure, but it is 2020. So if you look at your numbers and you see 2020 as our year right now, the dating system that we started with was one, it's about 2,000 years. So each of our answers is 2,000 years. So that takes us down to the bottom where it says the Bible tells of a young earth about, well, if we add 2,000 and 2,000 and 2,000, what do we get? Our 6,000. Yes, our final number will be 6,000 years old. And that's right. That's what comes from this awesome book, God's Word. It tells us that our earth is aged at 6,000 years old. Now, there's something that I want to talk about because I'm sure you've heard about this, especially since you guys are the older kids. There's something called radiometric dating. I'm going to kind of compare this to what we just learned about the earth from the biblical truth. Radiometric dating is probably something you've heard over and over and over. And what it says is the scientists look at the rock and they decide how old the rock was, what age it would be, and then they do all these calculations to tell us how old our Earth is. So let's think about that for a minute. Do you know any scientists that are that old, that have lived that long, that would be able to look at a rock when it was first formed, whether it was from a volcano or just formed on the earth, that would know exactly when the earth or when the rock was formed? Do we know any scientists like that? No. So that's the problem 
Whenever we think of radiometric dating and the things that some people say, they want us to believe their methods. They want, us, they want to try to figure out the age of the earth by looking at their rocks and telling us how they see, how they feel that it was formed. But these methods are not accurate. They're often incorrect ages. These are the people who also don't trust in the, fact, in the faulty methods that they refuse to believe that God knows and God has shared and God will tell us how it is. They don't care what God has to say. But we know that God is the only one who was there at creation so we can trust what the Bible says. God's word does not change, but man's word does. I want you to trust God's word over man's word. I don't want you to believe whatever you hear just because you hear it over and over. I want you to check the facts, and I want you to check them in this great book that we have because we know that everything in this book is true, and especially check the facts on creation. All right, so today we saw that God... So today we saw what God's Word says about the age of the earth. We had the opportunity to see exactly how ages and names listed in Genesis 5 and 11 come together to give us the amazing birth certificate for the earth. We can use these passages in Genesis along with other historical resources to calculate the age of the earth today. And it comes out to be about 6,000 years old. So any date or anybody that tells you the earth is millions or billions of years old goes against what we've learned in God's word. And that is what we should always trust. God was there, he never lies, and his word is true. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for giving us minds to think so that we can evaluate the evidence for the age of the earth, starting with his word instead of man's ideas. Thank you for Kids Bible Club and the exciting stories that we learn. Help us to take these lessons and share them with others so that we can all become closer to you. We love you. Amen. All right, I hope you enjoyed our number, our lesson full of numbers today to learn the age of the earth. And remember, all of that information is true because we get it right out of this awesome book. Don't forget, keep working on your books of the Bible. Keep practicing them so that when we get back together, you can marvel us with your knowledge of the books. And remember, God was there. He never lies. His word is true. In your packet of goodies that you have, there are some other activities and worksheets that you can do to check out some other facts and cool things about the age of the earth. There's a word scramble, a coloring page, some crosswords. Um, so keep those handy. Keep your scripture sheet with you. And again, have a great, a great week and spread the word of God. See ya! Hi everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and do October to craft. Now since it's October, um, we're going to go ahead and do a pumpkin lantern. So everybody has a little packet in your bag. So just go ahead and get your packet out, open it up, and um, dump the materials on the table. Um, Aubrey here is going to show us how to do it. So first of all, what we're going to do is you're going to take your lantern. So go ahead and get your lantern. And we're going to expand it. We're going to put the metal rod in the middle. set of hands for this part. And the plastic holes go into the metal prongs to hold it open. It's kind of tough. Once you have your lantern, now you're going to go ahead and put all the pieces on it. Um, and you actually have instructions in your bag, so um, if you get lost, you can always check out your instructions and um, that should help you with your 
with your project here. So we're going to go ahead and put the face on the one side of the lantern and then you're going to go ahead and put the cross on the, on the other side of the lantern. And the nice thing is these are sticky on the back so you don't need glue or tape or anything. I think Marsha is going to go ahead and close. kids, it was good to have you again today at Kids Bible Club, and uh, we can't wait to see you again next month, and we hope that you had fun today, and let us go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all the kids who watched uh, this video. We ask that you be with them and help them to learn your ways. We ask that you be with them as they go to school and be with all of them and their families and bless them. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time.